Matthew Patrick. I'm calling you out, son. All right, here it is. Let's talk about these fucking illusion discs. The illusion discs, I believe, were introduced into the FNAF world first in the Twisted Ones. It's sort of Scott Cawthon's catch all, kind of like his retrofit to the entire series to make things work. It's kind of like when you point out a plot hole in Harry Potter and every Harry Potter stand just hits you with the It's because it's magic. But the illusion discs aren't just a slapdash metafix. I think there's actually been a lot of thought go into them. And although they are the bane of Matthew Patrick's existence, there's a lot of interesting facts to explore, and there's a lot of connections you can make using illusion discs. On a side note, I actually believe this is what's happening in FNAF 4. There's a child who has witnessed the horror that these animatronic and mascots can create. The child's now seeing the blank capture animatronics as these nightmarish versions of, of Fredbear and, and Co. It's actually even right down to the shimmering children and the Freddy head at the end of the bed. If you want some supporting evidence of that, you only have to look to the Twisted Ones, the book in which these illusion discs were introduced. And Charlie, when she sort of commits herself to being captured by these capture animatronics that I'm dubbing them, the Fredbear actually appears with its head and its gnarly teeth at the foot of the bed. Exactly the same as what we see in FNAF 4. There's also these baby these children that BB makes, these babies, are they shimmer, and they shimmer in and out of existence. And, and that's the same thing we get in FNAF 4 when we turn around, literally the, the shimmering. So there's a lot of parallels and a lot of connections to make there. I just thought I'd point that out. But the illusion discs and the audio mimic technologies, they basically allow anyone and everyone to be anyone and everyone. You can basically deem anybody a robot that you like. And that's what MatPat has pointed out. It's basically allowing Scott the freedom to write and rewrite history throughout the entire franchise the way he sees fit. Strangely enough, you could actually even explain some of the stranger stories, uh, like Into the Pit. Oswald, it, he appears to time travel through the pit back to 1985. If you wanted to stretch the illusion discs and their capabilities, well, in the Twisted Ones, they can create an entire pizza plex with crazy things happening and so many illusions that you don't know what's real and what's fake. There is no reason to say that Oswald and Jeff, after being exposed to illusion discs in Jeff's pizza that were remnants of the Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria that it originally was, there is no reason to say that their brains weren't fried and they were seeing things that weren't actually there. Anything's possible with illusion discs. Basically, you can just say that any character has had their brain fried by illusion discs, like Henry did um, in the fourth closet, or confessed that he had in the fourth closet, because exposure to these illusion discs is bad for the brain, and anything can be written off as an illusion. Magic did it. The Twisted Ones was actually released back in 2017, meaning we actually basically almost had six fully fleshed out uh, FNAF game title releases. Introducing illusion discs at this point and claiming that Henry invented them long before what we see with the current Security Breach trilogy, uh, it kind of allows Scott to retrofit the timeline and fill in any gaps of logic that have appeared. If something pops up, he can simply say, that was an illusion. Or, if it's something that he wants to keep in, he can say, no, that wasn't an illusion. That was an animatronic with an illusion disc. Anything is possible, is what I'm trying to say. Now, the reason I'm calling out Matt Pat about illusion discs is because on his most recent GT Live, he was having a chat and the conversation led itself towards, well, why in the books do Charlie's friends not notice her growing up? You know, like you would notice someone going from a toddler to a teenager. Uh, like I've got a seven-year-old daughter. I know she changes very quickly, but not that quickly. And look, it's a valid point but something didn't sit right with me about it. So I had to go back and do a little bit of research. I've recently listened to the Silver Eyes trilogy again. I think I can fill in a few things for you, Maddie. Primarily, um, it's because the Charlie bots are utilizing illusion discs. So they repeat in the books that the illusion discs, it doesn't show one illusion. It's not like putting a mask on. 
it shows the person what they're expecting to see. This is how we get the, the nightmare twisted animatronics in the second book. It's because the people that have had those horrors and trauma are expecting to see that coming after them. So when you are raising a child or when you are exposed to a child every day, you would expect to see them grow older. If a thought comes into your head of, I wonder how tall they are, you would expect them to have grown taller, which is within the capabilities of these robots, of these Charlie bots. Now, the technology that Henry invented is actually super advanced. Even back when it was Fred Bear's Family Diner, he had some super advanced technologies and robotics that he was playing around with. Even beyond William's comprehending and William's creating. In the Silver Eyes, as William's looking at Charlie, he says something to the effect of, Oh, you are something beautiful. Some, something creepy like that. And look, back in 2016 when that book was released, we all just thought he was being a big pervert. He, looking back, he was just in absolute awe of the creation he saw through the illusion and he saw what she truly was and the beauty of the robotics that he so profoundly respected and envied in henry um somebody had actually i did a reddit comment and somebody had commented back um saying no no charlie bots don't have illusion discs but they do this is proven with ella the doll um, she's literally just a doll holding a tea set. She's nothing special. When John flicks the illusion discs uh, within her presence, within her range, she suddenly, she doesn't just become a human toddler. She becomes so real that her face is warm to the touch. It feels like skin. Incredibly advanced technologies. Now, something that I think has been glossed over as well is in the fourth closet, when Charlie and John actually find a box of sketches, an entire box just of Alice sketches at different heights. Now, it's almost alluded to that these were going to be alternate designs or how many robots did he make? Some people think that Henry made a countless amount of robots. I don't believe he did. I believe that these weren't mechanical sketches. I believe they were more software sketches. We know that the Charlie bots, if you want to call them that, can change heights and change appearances. Illusion discs help. Maybe it is the illusion that actually makes them change height, not physically, but that still requires progress programming and input. So I believe that, and this is the central crux of my answer to MatPat, I believe the illusion discs were changing over time as well. So people expected to see her grow older. And so the change between 87 centimeters and 100 centimeters, that may happen rather quickly from the programming and people are expecting to see what they see. So those two things amalgamating together means that you can achieve a gradual growth that goes unnoticed. Likewise, when Clay takes the photos of the evil Charlie from a distance, the illusion discs fade and it becomes real and then you can suddenly see the, the clown painted face, the baby paint on the animatronic it becomes clear from a distance so i don't know why i put that in there it's just a cool note and the changing of the heights and 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 the morphing it, it's actually proven once more when sarah is captured by baby elizabeth evil charlie whatever you want to call it the animatronic actually fluctuates uh, this robot fluctuates between tall, slender clown, average size human Charlie, and, and it happens very quickly. It's painted in the text as if that's something that the Charlie bot is doing on purpose, that that's something Elizabeth is doing to mess with Sarah, but I don't think it's that simple. Like everything, I think there's more to it. I think it was because Sarah had seen her natural form and she knew she was impersonating Charlie, so her mind didn't actually know quite how to perceive her. She didn't know whether to perceive her as evil Charlie or this clown thing with a weird long neck. It, 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 to break that illusion of your brain, you would have to sit there and think about it. William had achieved that. I believe he could see through them, but for somebody who's just been introduced to this and thrown in headfirst into the depths of it, I believe that was Sarah's brain not knowing quite how to process the information. 
One last thing to end on with illusion discs is MatPat also called out the fact that in the Twisted Ones, they, they sort of, especially in the graphic novel, which helps, they go into detail. They sort of show blood and the gruesome nature of Charlie's death and uh, via animatronic stomach teeth grabby thing. How yeah, he, he was saying you kind of have to take it with a grain of salt, almost, like this brutal death and then things come back from it. My response to that is that although they paint, literally in the graphic novel, paint the picture of a gruesome death, they go into so much detail on the blood. And even he found that odd. Why go into so much detail on all of the blood? Because once again, in such a high stress environment, that is what John and the others were expecting to see when Charlie went into the torso of the capture animatronic. They were expecting to see a horrible, gruesome, teeth grinded death with blood everywhere. When in reality, that version of Charlie is found in the fourth closet, a little bit messed up, yes, but just in a trunk. So she wasn't torn to pieces, her arm wasn't torn off, there was no blood to speak of. The most blood you see is in the silver eyes when her fake blood gets picked up off the floor, you know? I don't believe anything really happened to her, and I believe it was just because that's what they were expecting to see. So that's what we see in the graphic novel, their point of view. Whereas really, there was just this extremely damaged from a biff, from a fight animatronic, that was just very slowly trying to take her in. That's it. So in closing, illusion discs make no sense, but they also make all of the sense in the world. You can put them anywhere, you can make anything, and if you don't know how to explain something in the FNAF franchise, just say illusion discs and nobody can prove you wrong. Or maybe my theory's just an illusion. Dunno. Am I real? I might see you in the next video if I'm real. I could be AI.